Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Ljubljana, capital of Slovenia. In this video you will see the architecture of this magnificent capital city. Quirky old buildings, stately urban avenues, as well as the edgy modern buildings too. You'll see the places of culture, places to eat and drink, a lot of coffee with patitsa and jebanitsa, oh, yeah. the most famous desserts of Slovenia. And of course you'll see the heart of the city with its famous 17th century Franciscan Church of Annunciation. You will see the iconic Dragon Bridge as well as famous three bridges crossing the Ljubljanica River. We will explore other churches tucked away in the old city, the beauty of which is breathtaking. And last but not least, you will see the castle, where I'll show you various ways of getting to it. And of course, we'll go on a river tour, where you'll see the city open up in the most beautiful way from Ljubljanica River. Not to forget the street art too, it is done so tastefully here and there's even the famous Metelkova place, which has a very busy history. We will explore that too. When I have arrived in Ljubljana, the old town is very easy to get to from the train station. The walk is almost a straight line. Those were the most pleasant 20 minutes of my first impression of the city. I must say that the locals are very friendly, almost everyone speaks English and they're always willing to help. One other observation of course is that the city is super super clean, you see bins of all kinds literally everywhere and it's not just bins, it's uh, bins for recycling. Uh, the recycling here is on the next level, seriously. Ashtrays are everywhere, recycled bins everywhere and nobody litters, which is pretty incredible. I know this is something that we should do anyway, but it's so nice to see that a big city is so clean. The old city is beautiful, it sits on the base of the hill where Ljubljana castle is situated. And it's great because you can see the castle almost from every point in the old city. I love to explore cities in a gradual manner, to fully savor the area where I stay first and then move closer to the center until I reach the heart of the city. My first observations of the country is that it's incredibly clean and locals are incredibly friendly. But it's not just that everything feels very compact, but it's not just small, it has got this edge of grandeur to it. So you see tiny little areas, but perhaps it's Austro-Hungarian edge, perhaps it's Baroque edge of architecture that makes them so grandeur. And the combination of small areas with very, very vibrant architectural design is absolutely incredible. And it's hard to explain how these two things work together, but they do, they certainly do. Uh, the other thing, of course, is food. The food is incredible. Cappuccino tastes very different from the one in uh, England and in Germany. I don't know why, perhaps it's something local. Espresso is incredible, so all the coffee scene is amazing and that is my initial observation. So obviously uh, Dublana has got a lot more to offer than, than just a food scene, but this is my initial observation. And this is what my street looks like, the place where I stayed. Honestly, to me it's incredibly beautiful. Right opposite the house I have stayed, there's a vegan restaurant, which serves outstanding food, but we'll get to the food part later. And also there is a water fountain only a few yards away on the side of an ancient church. 
One thing about water in Ljubljana is that it's very, very pure. Slovenia prides itself on its pure water and I certainly could taste that too. Few more yards and there is a great cafe which serves coffee and drink until fairly late. So if I fancied an espresso in the evening, there it was, tasty as it can be. The great thing about Ljubljana is, although it's a capital city, but it doesn't feel like people are rushing anywhere. It's clearly in the atmosphere. There's something in the air that makes you just want to enjoy, sit down and relax. It's probably one of the most relaxed capital cities I've ever seen. Usually I'm not particularly into shopping on my trips, but the shops in the old town are pretty incredible and there's even a shop dedicated to Petitza, a famous local dessert. So let's go straight to the heart of the city, where we see the beautiful waterfront of Ljubljanica River and Franciscan Church of Annunciation. The church was built in the 17th century. The facade of the church was built in Baroque style in 1703 and then later, in 1858, it was redesigned completely. The most recent renovations were done in 20th century. The facade was renovated in 1961 and then later in 1992. The pedestrian bridges outside the church were designed by Joze Plechnik in 1929 and 1932, which replaced all the wooden bridges. Joze created a true gem of architecture, which is now one of the signature places in Ljubljana. Again, in 1992, the triple bridge was renovated and now it simply looks like it was built yesterday. They certainly did a grand job on restoring this masterpiece of architecture. One other interesting observation that you can see these little almost balconies on the waterfront of Ljubljanica River and I think they're really nice, really cool. Simple reason is it feels very private being on one of these and you can really observe the beauty of the buildings on the other side of the river. I haven't quite noticed anything quite like that in other capital cities but I think it's such a such a wonderful idea to have these little balconies. This is the Ljubljana Cathedral. The towering beauty of this cathedral is not very old in relative terms, of course. The Gothic church which was there before was replaced in 18th century by this magnificent cathedral. You really can't miss it. It's located on Kirill and Methodius Square, right next to the market and town hall.
I don't practice religion, but looking at the incredible beauty of this building and the amount of craftsmanship that went into it does want to make me be there, to observe the paintings in their true context rather than in galleries, to see the infinitely intricate details of the interior is something that I personally need to allocate some time for, just to savor this incredible, incredible beauty. Riverboat ride was really pleasant, the smell of water, crispy morning chill, warming sun and of course dry continental air immediately took me back to my childhood. I absolutely adore small rivers and river tours with passion. I have chosen the tour without any commentary, again it is my preference, I do love to absorb and let the scenery speak to me with its uniqueness. And here is a rather quirky thing that I've captured. Someone was casually walking an emu in the city center. The bird was chilled and focused on its snacks, but it's something that you don't really see every day. I do wonder about exotic animals. What are they really like? Only a five minute walk will take you to the next iconic bridge, the Dragon Bridge. It was constructed in 1819, which replaced an older bridge called Misarsky Most, the Butcher's Bridge. The beauty of bridges in Ljubljana is uh, second to none. It's absolutely incredible and it's great to find little spaces like this one to, uh, to observe and enjoy. But what I keep thinking is it's great to know the historical facts and who did what and when, so to speak. But it's also great to just absorb the beauty as it is, enjoy it and capture this moment in your memory and in your heart as well, because it's incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Thank you. 
Street art is very beautiful in the city, but there is one particular place which blew my mind with the amount of street art and modern sculptures, that is Metelkova Mesta. What once was the barracks now is a place of modern art, which was initiated by mainly underground artists and intellectuals known as Metelkova Network. And only yards away from the flamboyant hub of expressive street art stands the Museum of Contemporary Art. And I thoroughly recommend a visit to appreciate the pure and untamed artistic self-expression. What I find really important is contemplation because sometimes you see so many beautiful moments, so many beautiful places, nooks and corners, so to speak. But then it's important to pause and remember these moments, let them in your heart, let them in your soul. Uh, because I've noticed there were occasions when I didn't do it and I've taken loads of pictures and by the time I got back, it's almost like the only thing I could remember was taking pictures. So it really is important to pause and contemplate as well. I don't know about you, but I love trying simple local food when I'm abroad. Ljubljana was no exception for me. The food is incredible here. There are two places which stood out for me. One is a beautiful restaurant called Julia, where I have tried the most tender and succulent pork served with vegetables and mashed potatoes. The other place is a famous kilbasarnia, where an award-winning street food is served essentially pork sausage with fresh bread roll and it's a picture of simplicity but it is absolutely perfect and if you're there do try the local wine called Svicek. It goes particularly well with that sausage. Coffee scene is great here too, especially for those who love espresso. Almost every place, small and large, serves great espresso and my favorite coffee bar was Ferdinand, only around the corner from where I live, which is great, and it was open till quite late too. So it's great for those coffee lovers who want their espresso at something like quarter to nine in the evening. Cappuccinos are served in small cups here and it tastes more like cortado, so the flavor is very rich and I certainly can't complain here. The tastiest cappuccino I had was from a small craft coffee cart on the central market. By the way, the food market is brilliant here. If you're staying in a place where you can cook, the fruits and vegetables here are fresh and very moderately priced. And if you want to have a really filling breakfast, the place I can recommend is called Le Petit Café. Only 15 minute walk from the city center, that place is always busy. There I had probably the tastiest croque madame.
after getting some tasty food, I have decided to explore the Ljubljana Castle, which is located in the heart of the old city, right on the top of the mountain. It towers so high that it can be seen from almost anywhere in the old streets. There are many scenic paths that lead to it, and this is one of them. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I love how the panoramic views open up to the city from this path. It took me a while to ascend, purely because I've ended up looking back at the city and admiring the beautiful views. There is, however, another way up to the top, which is funicular. You do have to pay, but it's worth the experience of a very smooth ride and, of course, the views are stunning. No matter which path you take, the views are going to be slightly different, but all of them are going to be incredible. All of them will blow your mind. This is the castle. Originally, it was built as a fortress in the 11th century. But throughout the history, its purpose changed. It was a residence of the provincial governor, barracks, prison, and now it is the most welcoming place for the lovers of history from all over the world. Observing the robust castle, I can't help but be amazed about what life was like when it was built. Ljubljana is a very beautiful and welcoming capital city. Its charm is great during the day, but it becomes even more magical when the light falls. Every city has its character and every city has its flavor and it's always changing at night or in the evening, so to speak. So let's find out what Ljubljana looks like when the sun goes down. Well, thank you very much for watching this piece and I really hope you enjoyed this piece and of course the beautiful capital of Slovenia, Ljubljana. And until next time, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.